Good afternoon, everyone. Hello, hello. Okay, I think we can wait one more minute or something and then we can get started. All right, I think we can get started. Um, let me see, I think it's already recording. Yeah, okay. Um, so welcome everyone to the Airstream JavaScript working group call of May 18th. I uh, need to remember you to abide by the higher pledge code of conduct and the antitrust policy. If you would like to add yourself to the attendees list, Feel free uh, to do so, so people know um, you are here. Um, is there Can anyone? Share a link? Yeah, I think I already did, but oh, uh, no, I, did. I joined too late, probably. No, I didn't. Perfect, thanks. Always a hassle to find the correct page in uh, Confluence. <laughs> Um, yeah, that's why I don't want to navigate. Yeah, I can understand that. Um, yeah, so if you would like to uh, add yourself to the tennis list, feel free to do so. Um, is there anyone new here today that would like to introduce themselves? I think I recognize almost all names. All right, then we can get started um, right away. Um, are there any status updates on different projects uh, that people would like to report on? Okay. Um, then I think we can get started straight away with the agenda. Uh, we have a presentation from Kareem on um, how the repo is structured and with all the new things we're adding that are not ARIs and how that works. I don't know what uh, if you have a title for it, Kareem. Um, I do. It's very cheesy, though. What is it? It's the future architecture of Aries framework JavaScript with a, a cheesy subtitle, navigating the changing Aries ecosystem. That was chat GPT, but hey. Ah. All right, well, so that's the presentation from Kareem. Um, anything else we would like to add to the agenda for today? Um, I think we could uh, discuss uh, the DITCOM V2 work in more detail. Uh, I, I saw there were some PRs. Um, any other things? Uh, I know we were going to have a discussion on the wallet API at some point. Uh, I don't see Ariel here today. 
Any other topics? Sorry, um, I suggest maybe maybe I just wanted to uh, suggest, discuss, and share status about Ascard libraries. So, and uh, honestly, we just still uh, suffer a bit uh, because of using only the latest version of uh, iOS. Uh, yeah. yeah, hi. Mm -hmm. So actually I've seen some uh, new pull requests merged into Ares Ascar, I believe yesterday uh, with lower iOS version support. And I believe uh, it should be done soon for individual. Is it right, Timo? Yeah, um, yeah, uh, it should be. I, I, I'm not sure though if Berent has already tested if it fully works now in like with the new um, release. Um, but yeah, I think he has now done Anupet's uh, RS and Ares Oscar, and, and the only yeah. thing left to do is EDR. Yeah, I just saw it before the meeting. So yeah, uh, it's a good progress. Uh, and I think, yeah, changes that Berend has done uh, are closing all issues that they created, I believe, because he also corrected bundle name and so on. So I think once uh, we'll get uh, all three sh shared component libraries, uh, including IndiVDR, we can just test it on our site. And uh, of course, we'll provide some feedback. Maybe I will just uh, write results to the issues that I created. Okay, yeah, that sounds good. Okay, um, perfect. Um, I think to like continue on the shared components then, I think the other final thing that needs to be done is like the lower uh, version support for Android as well, which we have the custom uh, cross images for. Um, I think, Clacio, you were able to build it in GitHub Actions, right? The custom images or not? Uh, yes. So I'm just making some changes and then I got to provide to uh, Barrett soon. Okay. Um, yeah, that sounds good. Um, then we can, uh, I think if that's done, um, Beerant can integrate those into the different pipelines. Um, are you going to publish, like make it a Hyperledger repo and publish them to the Hyperledger GitHub container registry or? Um, I was just going to provide to Beerant because I'm not quite sure we have a repo for the shared, for the cross shared uh, images yet. And I don't know if you should create a new repo or what is this plan is or maybe stay with animal for now as it's easier path. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure if we can just create a repo on a high pledger. I think that that would work uh, fine as well. Uh, but I do think it will be nice to have it as a separate repo because it will be used by all the shared components for repo. And then we can at least make sure that they have like a consistent uh, uh, build setup and Android version uh, support across those. Um, but if you just like, um, transfer it to us or like provide us with a link then I can go uh, to the process with Rye of adding it to Hype Ledger. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, okay. Uh, Cool, okay. Then I think that's it on the shared component stuff. Um, then we can get started. Uh, Kareem, do you want to screen share? Uh, yeah. That might be good. Let me see if that works. Um, All right, please let me know. Uh, oh God, it's polluting my screen. Um, is this uh, presentation view visible? Yeah. All right, well, uh, as you uh, you presented it as a presentation, um, I do have some slides, but it's not really a presentation. I guess um, it's more of a discussion. 
um, we have had internally uh, in Animo and um, yeah, I think stuff has been uh, changing recently. Um, what makes this uh, even more relevant? So um, I'd like to open the discussion here and to see what other people think of it. So a little bit of background. Why are we discussing this? Um, well, we all know um, Aries was initially um, um, conceived in uh, the indie um, uh, ecosystem. Um, as a result, uh, we well all or most uh, Aries implementations um, at first uh, depended on the India SDK um, and, and AFJ as well. Um, then Ditcom was also um, um, part as being part of, of Aries was also baked into the core. Um, and quite some stuff has changed um, over the last, uh, well, years, I guess. Uh, recently, we extracted, uh, well, one, we modularized AFJ. Um, recently, we extracted um, in the SDK from the core, shared components were added. Um, we now have a separate uh, packages um, for the Anomcrats format um, also, uh, because that became its own uh, Hyperledger project. Um, in the meantime, Ditcom has uh, moved away from Ares and is now being maintained by Div. Um, we have new support for other credential formats, uh, like the W3C format. We um, added support for uh, checked uh, other protocols, exchange protocols, like uh, OpenID is, um, um, is, well, is still being worked on, but um, the issuance um, side of it has partly been added. And now we also have an uh, ongoing discussion, um, which was partly held yesterday during the ARIES call. Uh, if, uh, yeah, what to do with ARIES, um, if ARIES um, is going to be moved to the Open Wallet Foundation or um, stay as is. Um, <clears throat> so because of that, I think we, uh, things are a little bit messy right now. To give you some examples of this, um, we, um, now have um, Anoncreds uh, or the, well, logic related to the Anoncreds uh, credential format um, in their own packages, um, but the W3C VC uh, related format stuff still lives in core. Ditcom uh, is part of core. Um, Ditcom transports some of them, like the HTTP and the um, and WebSocket transports, live inside core, while the uh, Bluetooth. Um, uh, transport lives in the extensions repository uh, and we have all kinds of ditcom um, based protocols that are also part of core um, think uh, issue credential and uh, present proof uh, while others uh, live in have their own module um, action menu being one of them for instance uh, do i skip yeah so this raises i think a few questions uh, one is what is the scope of core should it contain modules? Um, like now, core uh, uh, is a is its own package, but in the in the core source, uh, we have an, we have um, a directory modules that has all kinds of modules. The issue uh, credential or um, uh, um, is a module present proof um, the protocol and related stuff for that is a, its own modules. Um, <laughs> is that something we want? Um, should because should we have uh, modules live in the core package as well as outside of the core package is a question you could ask. Um, should we have like credential or proof format specific logic live in core or um, should we have that outside of core? Again, this goes back to the first point here is that we have um, for the Anocrats format we have separate uh, packages, but um, the W3C format um, is still part of core. With um, uh, the move from Ditcom um, out of the Aries ecosystem to, or, or well, it's I guess you can this you can argue if it's still part of Aries, yes or no. But uh, it moved to to Div. Um, is that still something we want to um, uh, be part of Core, or should that be like a separate uh, uh, module you can you can um, either include or not? Uh, let's say you only have uh, you only want to use um, uh, open ID then there is really no no point in including that logic to your project um should should core uh, also have like transport uh, did transport implementations 
Um, or should we just make or a very lean package that um, basically only as a dependency manager uh, defines some basic interfaces for modules and stuff, um, and for the rest, every everything, um, um, yeah, lives separately from the core package. Um, then you can also uh, ask, um, we currently have two repositories. We have the main AFJ repository, we have the extensions repository. What is the scope of those and where do we draw the line? Um, do we want to include all modules um, in the main repository? This means that like whatever funky module someone comes up with, um, that, that, that the main repository uh, is, is the place for that. Um, do we only include um, modules uh, in the main repository? And this is an example of this is, uh, is, is DITCOM transports. Um, should we include them there? Uh, or should we maybe say, no, um, uh, transports are, are an extension of DITCOM, so we put them in the extensions repository. Um, yeah, are, are there modules we don't want to include um, at all? Um, or that we don't want to maintain. Um, again, let's say some contributor has a very, uh, writes a module for a very obscure database, for instance. Um, should we, uh, as, as the community, uh, take it uh, upon us to maintain that, yes or no? Um, yeah, and then what is the scope of the extensions repository? Initially, it was mostly um, stuff built on AFJ. Um, you can think of the React, um, React, uh, hooks, um, which is, is like, it's a helper um, library uh, that you can use with AFJ, but it's not part of AFJ itself. Um, the same goes for the Redux store. Uh, or do we want to also have modules live in the extensions repository? Um, and lastly, like, th does it does it even make sense to um, maintain both? We've seen quite some um, difficulties with maintaining or keeping the, the versions um, uh, how do you say it? that in sync, I guess. Um, and so it like, is, doesn't it make more sense to put everything in one repository? Um, so here are just some, some two ideas that were discussed, but um, obviously um, uh, I'd like to open the, uh, the discussion after this. So one idea is just to, to keep it as is sort of. So um, Aries framework JavaScript stays Aries focused, uh, whatever Aries turns out to be, because that is also a bit of a question. Um, but uh, so the main repository just stays focused on Aries. Um, so um, here I am assuming um, that uh, Ditcom uh, will 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 be be considered and uh, keep being considered part of Aries. Uh, but that this would mean that OpenID related protocols, for instance, would um, live in their own repository. Uh, but this raises all kinds of questions like, again, is Ditcom uh, part of Aries uh, and therefore also all related protocols? Um, is Indy, do we consider Indy part of Aries? Uh, and does, does it have the right to live in the main repository? And the same goes for Anoncred, W3C, um, because W3C is not a ARIES standard, but well, the ARIES protocols or the DITCOM protocols uh, allow for other formats. So you could argue uh, if other formats then also should be included, yes or no. Uh, the same goes for PEX, uh, the presentation exchange, um, which uh, the present uh, proof two, uh, present proof V2 protocol relies on. Um, and uh, also if we're gonna like make all kinds of different repositories, uh, we probably get uh, into even more difficulties um, with regards to maintenance. So the other idea is just to um, make Aries framework JavaScript a sort of generic SSI framework. Uh, and I think like uh, we're moving towards that more and more. And this would mean like we don't, uh, yeah, we welcome like any standard uh, SSI related standard the protocol into the main repository. Um, so in that case, open ID related protocols would, will, uh, have the right to live there, um, not in core. So in this case, we would make core a strictly a dependency manager again, with some basic, um, uh, interfaces to, uh, to interface with the dependency manager. Um, but then that also means we move every, uh, like all the business logic. So think of, well, um, DITCOM related logic 
um, uh, DIPCOM protocols, so issue credential, et cetera, et cetera. Um, uh, logic related to specific credential formats, uh, proof formats, et cetera, et cetera. We would move all that out of the core package, still in the in the um, the main repository, but out of the core package uh, and give everything their own package um, slash module. Um, yeah, this was it basically. Um, other ideas are more than welcome. Um, uh, but yeah, this has been. Uh, has been uh, keeping me up at night. So it's, I'm happy to discuss this. Um, I'll stop the screen share now. Um, and yeah, are there any ideas, preferences uh, about this? I know you have a lot of ideas. Uh, I have. Comments. Ah, cool. Um, so as as you mentioned, open wallet, and I was not in the call this week, so I'm gonna have to watch the recording to catch up with the with that conversation specifically. I think I think maybe Aries JavaScript might be morphing into something. I don't know if it's. I don't know if you be something like the the open wallet or uh, or it's it's just a generic area more than Aries agent, right? Because it's if it's gonna support multiple protocol, it's it seems to be evolving to something else and I can't quite figure out what it is, but but it's more than Aries. <laughs> yeah, that's the problem, isn't it? Um but I but I I do take your point on have multiple repositories and sometimes having multiple repositories is a blessing and a curse. And, and I feel like those components are so tightly coupled version wise that it's it makes sense that they, they you're all together, the, the, the extension and, and just break it down in multiple packages we already have right now. Um, with regards to DIDCOM, um we already using the, the rust library or is the the javascript library from diff is that uh we're no we're not using any diff libraries uh, currently for did implementation so and and i think if that is the future for us i think we should maybe consider that as well because if we already have we're already not dealing with the uh, with the storage part because we're relying on ASCAR. We're already not really dealing with some some of the uh, the unknown cred stuff because that's moving from another to another library as well. So so it feels like more and more the Aries JavaScript is becoming more of a thin layer around bringing all those other libraries together in a developer friendly way. It's more more of a facility than than re it's more of a kind of a sugar syntax as opposed to re-implementing things. <laughs> and, and I yeah. don't know if that's I don't know if that's the go because if 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 the go is to bring everything together to the for the for the JavaScript community to to use or is the go to keep it as JavaScript implementation as possible. Yeah so that is a good question. Um, but and, and but I think regardless of, of if we implement um, stuff in, in JavaScript ourselves or use a Rust library or whatever, um, the main question here is what, what, and this is also something we cannot answer in this call and should be like um, further discussed, I think higher up, um, but uh, is like, what is Aries? Um, is Aries, is DITCOM still part of Aries? Um, and if so, um, like, should we, make because currently you cannot you like even if you want to uh, make a a 100% um, open id uh, related agent which uh, now is probably not the right time because we don't have everything implemented yet but but that will soon be the case um at this point you don't have the choice right you include your didcom logic um so should we externalize that um yes or no uh which 
I find difficult to answer because it really depends on, on what we consider Aries to be. Um, and if we want to make the framework uh, like, or if we want to keep the framework in Aries and like focused on that, yes or no. I, I think uh, for me personally, I would switch it around, not look at what is Aries, but more on like, what do we want AFJ to be? Um, and then see if that fits in the model of Aries. Um, uh, yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, and then my, yeah, what I, I, my personal preference is because I just think um, with all the changing, e like the changing ecosystem and, and also like in, in Europe, uh, people or the European Union has been jumping on um, open ID. So there's probably a lot of people wanting to, to do that um, while there are other, uh, um, um, yeah, other organizations and parties in, more interested in Bitcoin, uh, I think um, the most like the the, the last option um, I mentioned, like just Aries framework JavaScript as a generic SSI framework, makes the most sense because I think it will be usable for the most uh, amount of people. Um, so so, but that it is. will not be called. Aries framework JavaScript is it called SSI framework JavaScript, right? This is the difficult thing. Yeah, yeah. Does the name make sense then? That's, uh... I, I think lately we are not sure that, that that's something that we were discussing some month ago in our philosophical sessions, uh, Karim. <laughs> but uh, even if it, it's not clear for everyone what Aries is about, right? Uh, I think there is some agreement that Aries is a, is a collection of RFCs, I think. So, and what we are doing in this project is implementing uh, what's on, the, on those RFCs in the Aries RFCs repository. So I'm I'm wondering. I have two two thoughts about about, about this. <clears throat> One of of those is, what's the, the relationship between the Open ID Connect to Aries right now? I mean, is there any RFC re related to Open ID? So it's that the case. I don't know if it's at least at the current status of the project. Uh, I don't think it's it actually makes sense to to have that into the main repository. But but as you as all you say, uh, all of you say, um, probably there will be some relationship with, 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 between both uh, uh, projects. Let's say, or or I mean, especially if we are now considering to to, I don't know if to merge or, or, or what to do with the, with the Open Wallet Foundation that clearly will use OpenID. Um, but, uh, and, the, and, and the second thought was that uh, most, if not all uh, RFCs, well, not, not all, but most, most RFCs in areas are related to DITCOM. So I don't know if it will be really useful to, to externalize the DITCOM support or, or, because otherwise, I mean, if, if we do so, we will always need a, an external dependency to make a project work. So- Yeah, so just, just to clarify, like there are two, I think two levels of externalization, if you will, um, of this. So what I was referring to was especially like uh, Bitcom is now part of the core package itself. It's also in the main repository because that's where the, the, the core package lives. But like, should it be part, like question one is, should it be part of core? Um, or can it also be moved from core, still in the main repository, but as its own module? Um, oh. 
Okay. And to your to, to to the question before that, yes, you are right. Like most Aries protocols, not all, but most uh, Aries RFCs are based on uh, uh, on on Ditcom. But if you look in in at I don't know what is it Ditcom.org or something, the website that is maintained by Dit, those protocols now also live there. So um, and and that is where they are maintained, I guess. And and for now, probably if new protocols are developed, they will also be become an Aries RFC, and then uh, also also live on Ditcom.org, which makes it very confusing and difficult, obviously. But yes, absolutely. Um, so uh, yeah, uh, yeah. I don't know what to say. <laughs> it's a mess. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, okay. I. I understand. Uh, I think it makes sense what you are saying about uh, about leaving all the interfaces for the for the core package. I mean, to maybe to to extract all the all the proofs and and credential protocols and and, and that stuff to to separate modules like action menu or uh, question answer, for instance. Actually, recently we had some. A sort of, of of this extraction when uh, we did extract the uh, the proof protocol proof and credential protocols v1 I think we moved th those to to one on credit and it works quietly I mean it was fine so so uh, yeah cor I, 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 correct I, I, me if I'm wrong that, but... yeah sorry. The, those are those are only the uh, implementations right for ah, yes, yes, Anocred. Yes. Yeah, uh, because that's V1. Yeah. yeah. But, the, but then again, like, for, because for V2, um, uh, you can have multiple implementations, right? You can, uh, like, uh, you have different format, proof format services and credential format yes. services, I guess. Yeah. So those interfaces, um, um, if we define those interfaces in core, it's still like core still is a um, DITCOM, has a, has a strong relationship to DITCOM. Um, so the question is, do we want to make a separate, like, DITCOM? Package and and I think we have to be very careful with this because like if I'm just thinking about this, we will like just just extracting Ditcom and related protocols from the core means we like the amount of packages is going to grow immensely, um, yeah. and like for then then it would mean you have to install a thousand packages before you can do what you want. Um, which I forgot to mention in my presentation, which is also something um, in, like in the last in the last option, um, like making it a very generic SSI framework. Uh, in that case, uh, yeah, exactly this. So um, yes, exactly what yeah, you're yeah. saying. <laughs> saying like then, if, if we do that, we should we should really consider making sensible default packages. So um, AIP one, okay, boom, one install command. I have all those modules pulled in. Do I want Open ID? Fine. I maybe do an open ID uh, holder uh, uh, package, and boom, I have everything for the open ID stuff. And then uh, I don't know. You can uh, like uh, maybe credential format specific stuff have their own de default packages. But like if we're gonna go that route, we really need to do that because otherwise, that it will be so confusing. Um, yeah, but I yeah. think uh, uh, for me it makes sense to um make it more a generic ssi framework as well because um i think at least what we've noticed is that when you're now building ssi agents wallets whatever um um there's like it's becoming less and less of the requirement like oh you need to build an errors agent no it's like there's different profiles and there's different things and you need to um support them all so um i think um, having separate frameworks makes things harder, especially if, if AFJ is the thing that combines the, uh, the different implementations that are already there. Um, um, and then having all the other protocols and exchange stuff implemented, but still seeing it as an ARIS uh, framework where Ditcom is first-class citizen, but the others aren't, then also that would make a lot of sense to me. I think like if we're going to support them, we should just support them. Um, um, and um means extracting ditcom out of core i would say so you can uh have a core that's lean you can add ditcom and if you add ditcom you can add all the different protocols for errors intro profiles and then you can also add open id and the core is just the under 
lying interfaces that connects everything mostly also related to crypto so if you support like uh, um, um, uh, edward's signatures um, you can support those in in all the arise uh, protocols or things that need it or in the open id stuff or if you support jsonl d credentials that you can use that with both the um the arise issue credential v2 protocol jsonl d format or you can also use that same implementation across uh, for the open id um um implementation so that it all becomes like the underlying packages can be reused so that we never have to re-implement uh, things, but it is more separated. I think in my head, that makes the most sense. Um, and then we do need to account for the, uh, like, how do you set it up um, uh, in, a, in a good way where it's not like you have to install 100 packages because I... Uh, I've also noticed that with the current version that that is already like quite a lot. Totally. Um, I yep. I do I do it very often, like in creating an an, an an test setup with AFJ to test a specific scenario and and like to increase from zero three, installing two packages to zero four, where uh, it can be like up to six or seven or something that uh, um, uh, yeah makes it a lot complexer. But there is a lot more flexibility now, which is um, um nice but yeah i think that's the only thing we would need to like with the separate like splitting it up is like okay how can we keep bundled logic that you probably want at, uh, together uh for example aip1 yeah because then the question is i think like um if you're gonna bundle these or make these defaults um on basis of what are you gonna do that and i think intro profiles make a lot of sense to say, okay, AP1 is one, but um, there are, uh, I don't know, like when the European Union has their, uh, finally has finished their thing and that has a name, uh, then that might be a profile. Um, but maybe there are other defaults, uh, like you should, we should not, uh, um, like intro profiles are one thing, but um, like maybe people would also want to use it purely as a DITCOM messenger, for instance um so yeah um then I, then i think we get we get in we need to yeah really define what um a bundle is and what it isn't um, or maybe sure. it's okay to get to, to let to keep it completely open um yeah and i think I, uh, like it's still if you um like what we currently have if you now want to build a ditcom messenger with afj you also have a lot of things enabled that you don't need. So I don't think it's such a problem that if you want to build that, you just pick one that aligns with that, which would probably be like, all right, I want to use Ditcom V2. So I'm then choose just the AIP3 package. Um, and if you have really custom needs, you can always like create your own bundle that is lightweight. Um, but I think, yeah, I think having some extra dependencies you may not need is not too big of a problem um, uh, because that's already the case right now. Yes, but we are trying to like, with this move, we are trying to change that, right? So for instance, like like to me, it makes total sense to extract it come from it because that, because right now you, you don't have a choice. Um, and in the future, people might really not want to use that at all, um, which is, it doesn't make sense to any of us, I know, but these monsters exist. Um, so, um, so, so, so the point here is also to extract stuff, but then indeed you could also say, okay, well, if you want to go that deep, then, then you'll have to, to, to run like 40 install commands yourself. <laughs> so I, I'm just missing a little bit of a visual. If you can, if you could provide with a little of a block diagram of those things, that would be helpful. Um, I understand. Yeah, I can work that out. Yeah, I understand that separating did come um, and make it reusable. You mentioned, for instance, for instance, um, a use case by people who are using just a, an agent as a did come messenger. Um, I think, do we understand how people are using AFJ right now? Is that is that an opportunity for us to ask ask around and sort of survey? Like, how are you, how are you using AFJ? Is it just a is it really just a Aries and own cred agent? Um, so, and, 
Yeah, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, so I just feel like we, we I, I don't want to go around the SSI terminology. I, I'll rather stick with VC, just a, another comment. Um, yeah, I just just kind of feel I need a little bit of a diagram to say, okay, what is, um, okay, we're talking about Aries framework JavaScript. If I can create a mental connection to um, Aries Akapai cloud agent, I can see this being as kind of a some sort of wallet agent or Aries agent, whatever you want to call for JavaScript. Um, and then we need to to talk about, okay, there's a storage part that is independent of anything. There's a transport protocol that could be DIDCOM, could be something else, could be different types of credentials that goes through that transport protocol. Um, and then there's W3C that is kind of a wrapping everything together. I know I've been having conversations with Steven that maybe we should just move towards adopting that as the default standard that I know CRED always wrapped in W3C that would also answer that question. Um, yeah, not sure if I help. There's more questions than answer there. <laughs> no, it makes sense. And I do think um, that a diagram is a very good idea. Yeah, to, to see like if, okay, if we would do this, how would, because also um, how would the dependencies between all these different packages look like, right? Because you would have like, if we're gonna externalize every DITCOM protocol, they, you cannot use them just without and didcom itself so all the protocols and didcom um like the, the core logic of didcom like then they would that that didcom package would always be needed for all the other so it's mm -hmm. i think it's it's a Thank good you. idea to, to sort of visualize the dependency tree we would end up with that. yeah and and to be fair i've heard comments about didcom doing too many things so there might be a possibility that did come itself goes through a refactoring and split things up <laughs> yeah and as, as as for your question like how are people using it yeah um maybe a survey is, is indeed not a bad idea um like if i is just from from what i see in the community and and here is i think most people are definitely using uh, AFJ, especially currently for uh, mobile agents, and they like they always uh, or usually do something with credentials. Uh, uh, yeah. Just a pure, pure DITCOM messaging agent. Um, I think yeah, well, Timo created one, I think, but um, uh, and I don't think a lot of people are doing that. But um, yeah, I I do think that that. The, like didcom is such a broad as you said maybe it's doing too much or it's too generic it's such a broad thing that to me it personally it doesn't make sense to tie it to verifiable credentials necessarily because mm -hmm. it just has a lot of possibilities and applications outside of that scope and and to add to that again as a maintainer of airs bifold we do get a lot of comments and sometimes misunderstanding about what is bifold what is fj and I just recently had meetings about, hey, yes, we are using bifold. It's like, well, no, you're just using FJ, which is great. <laughs> um, so, so I sometimes I, I feel like there's a little misunderstanding, even though I know FJ can be used as the issue verifier, not just the holder part of it. So it's more generic than that. Bifold is more focused on the holder part. But it's also evolving now with the mobile verifier. We also have that. <laughs> so, so I, I I feel like AFJ the way that I simply explain to other people is like for me, AFJ is kind of headless UI agnostic by phone. It's like if you don't want to, if you don't want any opinion, opinionated uh, way of how the navigation supposed to be, that is the core. That's uh, that's Ares JavaScript, and. And I, I don't I, I don't know I, I've been thinking about if maybe even there's a possibility that this could simply merge maybe bifold core is what Ares JavaScript is. <laughs> so I think the one yeah well the one thing there I I would like to argue is um, although AFJ is mainly used in mobile situations um, it is it is also possible to use it server side. We are using it ourselves um, uh, for server-side right. components. It's not super popular, 
Uh, but so merging it with bifold necessarily, um, I don't. I don't think that makes too much sense because, um, uh, yeah, that would sort of take away the the, the genericness or the multi-platform uh, ish. Uh, yeah, and, and, uh, and that's nature. fine. As, yeah, and as I said, there there is uh, even even like every now and then, I, I guess now there is a hype on an AFJ as a mediator. Um, again, it's a feature that it's there and not quite sure how production ready that is but it's there but i think we need to make those questions whether it is supported and and kind of endorsed for for production use case and and we should be f and we should be clear when a feature or something is intended as a production or is intended as a kind of a playground or it's evolving right this is just a kind of a lab thing that may evolve to be production supported or it may just stay there as a lab thing <laughs> i mean i think i think like we should intend to make everything um uh, production ready right if we merge it in so uh like a mediator uh i guess yeah i mean if you can mediate uh, and it's not production ready then then how much sense does it make to to have it in the first place i mean there will definitely probably be a uh, period of time where it isn't uh, because of scalability issues or whatever, but I think that should be the aim of of anything we merge in, um, that it should be a, yeah well, used in production. Is 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 anybody using FJ a kind of a as a scalable server side? Does it is it scalable? Can I have multiple? If I'm running in a cloud, open like Kubernetes, does it support multi pods? Is it resilient? Do we do we what kind of properties or features we we're supporting? Uh, by the way, we're using it uh, currently in the development, and I think I can share that we uh, encountered some issues after some initial loading testing. So we somehow managed to uh, bring areas framework JavaScript storage to a state where it was really really slow after testing it uh, with thousands of uh, requests per second. Well, sometime we actually found that uh, our storage in Postgres become, well, I uh, I suppose that it was the storage, but it's just become very slow. Yeah. So it was the case on our but, side. But in future we plan uh, to make uh, more uh, tests and uh, lower than scalability tests. And right now we use only one instance for generic agency. And honestly, the same for a database. Of course, uh, we don't keep a high load in this situation. And during the next few months, uh, we will have a load and scalability test. And of course, we'll be happy to share our results. Yeah. That yeah. Would be, uh, and see. Yeah, I also have uh, some more questions about mediators. So by the way, do we have some uh, deployment or public mediator that based on AFJ currently? We have a uh, like a dev mediator, but it's like not in a it's 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 just for development. So it, it doesn't it isn't set up to handle uh, very high loads or, or these kind of things. Uh, yeah, just for the context, uh, recently we encountered some strange problem with uh, implicit mediator strategy, uh, pickup pick up strategy in areas by fault and uh, AFJ based mediator. So basically we connected uh, areas by fault to AFJ based mediator to implicit uh, pickup strategy. And uh, there was a, a case where we just restarting the Ares by fault app and we can't receive any messages from mediator later. But uh, this is not the case for um, pickup protocol version two. So I just changed the config and it just become all normal actually. Yeah, I would have advice against using the implicit way because there's uh yeah quite some limitations um with how it works and how many messages so i i, I would recommend to use pickup v2 uh, uh uh either way mm -hmm. yeah actually Thanks. that that uh, that implicit support was 
mostly le left to <clears throat> to support what's in Akapai, right? It's not it's not something that yeah. is actually standardized. Uh, so yeah, I noticed that uh, most of the mediator are using mediators are using Akapai. And uh, yeah, with Akapai based mediator, there are no issues whatsoever. Uh, and I think uh, I will bring together some details about this issue and uh, probably will create an issue in uh, Eros framework uh, repository too. Yeah, maybe it's just not critical as you're saying that implicit uh, strategy is uh, not really good, but uh, at least for the record, it will be useful, I think. Yeah, and I think uh, on these things like scalability is um, um, one thing I would like to explore more uh, over the coming months is also of not using like OSCAR as a um, encrypted database, uh, because I think in a lot of scenarios like uh, using a custom uh, layer that encrypts all data, and, and I think that there's um i think a lot of performance gain to be held from just using for example uh, a, a relational database directly without encrypting everything and i think for a lot of use cases for example a mediator um, um it is not really needed to use a secure encrypted oscar storage as as long as you have your keys um uh, managed in a good way but like um using a database directly which are really built to scale um um uh, uh yeah to uh, insane amounts of like traffic and records i think we can have a lot of um performance gain um in using it in the server but we have to look at okay how can we like correctly map um the records we're using in afj to like relational database structures and, and these kind of things okay, so, yeah, so... That, 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 that that's what that, what, what i was going to say yeah isn't the, the the problem or or the main scalability problems related to the to the storage? I mean, isn't this happening also to to Akapai? I I I have seen in the in the latest month that there were some concerns in Akapai also to to for for, for this for, for mediator scalability and, and well mostly for for the mediators right, but because of the handling of the web sockets and and, and that stuff but also for, for uh, issues. Uh, it's a little bit different. Akapai does abstract that out. So you could use a relational database and, and see the records being encrypted. So, so, so again, it sounds like we're evolving a little bit more there. So that storage layer, I think, yes, I think it's, it's probably worthwhile to abstract that out and not necessarily have a strong dependency to ask her directly could be something else. Um, but I just want to make a note, um, since the Timo, you put mobile holder wallet, I just want to mention that that is evolving right now, that mobile wallet is also verifier. And will probably be at issues as well, issue of issues will be coming. Yeah, um, I'll put that on a separate separate line then yeah. because I think there's like a, a a difference in use case uh, yeah. and how how often uh, uh, yeah and I think I think mainly um, like mobile is a bit easier in this case because you don't have the scalability um, issues um, so I think like a mobile issuer wallet would probably also work fine it's just that when you go to the server site and you want to handle like a lot of traffic then um, um, yeah there are still a lot of limitations in 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 AFJ probably and also in the storage layer and, and everything well I, I think in mobile it, it's a little bit of a, a different lens it's, it's not scalability in the factor that we we're not going to have multiple copies but performance is too important. We want it to be super quick startup. So, yeah. so, so the startup, the performance, the loading has, it's important, but not the scalability and redundancy point of view. <laughs> and also what, what we are facing at the moment in our app, you know, that our application is, is mostly a, a chat application based on, on, on EFSH. And when we, we have to manage 
lots of or several events like for instance receiving a message or uh, uh, I, I, I received uh, were marking uh, things uh, i mean chats as, as, as red or something like that uh, if we are going to to rely completely on on on, on afa storage uh, we we are having some some problems on on that uh, for so we what we are doing right now is is to for the moment is to offload some of the of the parts of the application to to another kind of database like uh, realm uh, to to manage those events uh, in a more lightweight uh, way because it's not it's not easy to well, admit, at least for us which are, because we, we are not so experts on, on react native and that stuff right but uh, but it's it, it's a bit difficult to to get some uh, instant reaction of the of the uh, events when when they come very fastly i mean several times per second or, or more or less and and also another issue that that, that you already know timo because we were <laughs> talking about that in the last months as well is about the the, the pagination which is uh, which is not easy to 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 have in in a secure database like Ascar or or Indy, because even if you, you you can support the offset and the on the limits, if there are if there are some new records added to the to the to your query to, to your query, let's say, you will need to handle the pagination in, in a different way. For instance. Uh, by uh, by, by uh, taking the the, the records uh, before that uh, some particular date and also order the records by date, for instance, by created at, for instance, and currently the sorting is not supported by by Ascar and and Indy, at least not for. Uh, for the for encrypted tags because it's not possible to sort when you have encrypted tags it's something obvious but but <laughs> but it's, it's it's a problem in 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 such cases i think we can uh, make this a topic uh, uh, to discuss in the uh maybe next week or in the future on like talking on these uh, uh, issues um, uh, because I think they are very relevant and there's a lot of improvements probably to be made um, 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 and it should be more flexible probably. So I think we can pick that up in the future um, and probably, probably also something we can pick up separately from um, um, like the future architecture of Airstream JavaScript. Um, I see we're at time. Um, I think this was a good discussion. I don't think we came to a conclusive answer. I think we we <laughs> are kind of in a in a in a Impossible. direction. Uh, like we need uh, like I think people like the idea of like having a more uh, generic SSI framework. I uh, just need to see like what's going to be included. We won't be able to do make the change in one day anyway. So maybe. <laughs> Um, we all uh, think a bit more about like, right, um, if this is going to be um, more of a generic framework, what would that mean? Like, what would the structure look like? Uh, Cream can work on the yeah. diagram. We can ask around a bit. And then also like, what would that mean? Like, do we still call it an ARIS framework in that case? Then what is the scope of ARIS? I think we can continue that discussion. Um, uh, yeah. Yeah, I'll um, I'll try to write up uh, or draw up a diagram for next week. Perfect. Thank you, everyone. Uh, thanks, Gary. Yeah, thanks, everyone. And uh, thank see you. you next. Thank you all. Thank you, guys. Thanks. Goodbye. Cheers. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye.